Okay, so we're doing assignment three. If you go onto our, our page, you'll see the assignment sheet for it. Just like we have for our other assignments. But the assignment sheet is to basically take your creature design from assignment two and put it into your fantasy landscape design from assignment one. Each of those needed at least five different references. So now we're putting 10 different references together into one image. So first I'm going to go to assignment two and I'm gonna find my highest resolution PSD file. And this is the one I submitted, right? So I make sure it's as clean as it can be. I see one little thing that kind of bugs me, and that's the softness here. There's always things you'll look at, but it's it can be fixed with clone stamping. So I'm gonna clone stamp with a slightly more opaque, harder edge. Come on, keep up with me. I'll put a little bit of a darker shadow on here. If something's not doing what you think it should be doing, sometimes it's because you have a selection, or sometimes it's just because Photoshop's being weird. I'm, I'm trying to get. Let's see. Okay, so. Oh, it's because my clone stamp is set to current layer. I need it to be set to all layers. And then I'll be able to, yeah, there we go, put in that darker shadow to kind of sink that, that bare fur texture behind. And I'm just going to cut across this spine. I don't think I want that spine anymore. And I can make my clone stamp smaller and sharper depending on the need. And if I use my pressure sensitive stylus and tablet, I can be even more accurate. So once all of your finishing touches are done, then I'm gonna widen it up, soften it up, and then blend it in a little bit. There we go. And you've kind of dodged and burned it down and you like your creature. Oh, my exposure is too low there. There we go. And then I wanted to maybe dodge these things. So you can take my input from assignment two and use them to kind of improve some things. I might even burn a little bit of that back wing. So there's always these little things we can do. But once you're happy with it, these are the steps to give you what I think of as a sticker, something that can transplant beautifully onto different backgrounds. And these are the steps we did at the end of assignment two. And they are to go to the very top even above your clone stamp layer, click on your clone stamp layer, turn off all your background layers. So I only have my combined layer and my clone stamp layer turned on. And I hold down option and then I say layer merge visible. So that there is one clean layer on top of everything that is perfectly clean. Then I can use my magic wand with contiguous turned off at 32, select the empty space around that combined layer. And I can see that it's perfectly cut out, that there's no little debris, little pixels floating around. So I know it's a clean cut. Now what I can do is take that combined, I'll call it my final combined layer and move it into a new file without ever having to save it as a PNG or um, lose the quality by reducing it to a compression format. Okay, so that is the layer I need. 
Now I'm going to open assignment one. And same thing, I want to find my highest resolution PSD file. Why do I need the PSD files? Well, I need the layers. I don't want to just put one flat image on top of another flat image. So now in my, my final PSD file for my landscape, I am going to go to the very top underneath my sketch, and I am going to move one layer from one Photoshop file into another. This is how you do it. I swoop out my assignment two. I can shrink it if I like. As long as I'm clicked on it, I'm able to access its layers. Then I simply grab this layer and drop it onto my other. And it will match resolution. Remember, these are both at 350 pixels per inch at at least 11 by 14 inches. And then I can use my move tool and I can start moving this guy. Now what's funny is my requirements for assignment three in the assignment sheet are that your creature take up at least 25% of your overall creature scape scene. So one option I have that I kind of like is to make this kind of a Godzilla, like Gorgon creature that I keep at this size and I'm going to place him on top of that water tower. Maybe shrink him with Command T just a little bit so it looks like he's just about to perch because I want to get his, his head in there and a little bit of his wings. But yeah, that looks pretty good. So that's one position I might use, right? I can also rotate him. That helps the talons to actually fit on the, the water tower a little bit better and kind of grip it. And it helps get the movement of the wings. And you'll notice how sharp it is, how clean it's on top of everything else, right? So if I've done my job, there's no little debris I carried around with it. The other option, if I make a duplicate of that now, is I can shrink it and fit it somewhere else in. So if this is instead the size of a regular bird, do I want to put it in the foreground? Do I want to put it up in the sky? You know, where would it look best? Do I want to flip it? Do I want to have it, you know, at a different angle? And maybe I'd have it kind of overlapping the water tower and like, about to land on this ledge here. So your first decision is, how do you want to compose it? The other option is, what if I'll do a third, I'll make a duplicate of it, I'll move it up into the sky, and I want to have it look like it's about to land on the water tower, but I don't want all this stuff in the foreground. So the other option is I can actually crop it and change the scene. To kind of showcase my creature more. Now notice in all of those, I need to make sure that my creature is taking up 25% or more of the overall scene. So of those options, guys, what do you think we sh I should do? I could do this one, option one. I can do this one, option two, which is not quite 25%. I'd probably have to lose some of the sky. Or I can do this one, option three. So show of hands for option three. All right, show of hands for the others. Okay, it looks like option three wins. <laughs> So we're going to do this kind of Godzilla one. Notice you are allowed to have parts of your creature not showing. I could have parts of my creature underwater. I can have parts of my creature behind other elements, but it should still take up about 25% or more of the overall creature scape. Okay, so once I've chosen which creature I want to use, then I want to start syncing it down through my layers. I can turn off assignment two. I don't need to save it but it's not a bad idea to save it because I have a final combined layer now. 
But really, before I do anything else to assignment one, I need to say file save as, because I've added a pretty big element here. And now it's going to be assignment three, creaturescape. And I'm going to save it to the desktop as a Photoshop file. And there it is. OK, so now I can start playing with it. Take that top layer, use command left bracket, and start moving that layer down through your layers. Look at that subtle change that happens as soon as it goes underneath my texture overlay. Right, and now let's keep moving it down. Oh, now the tail's behind the water tower, but the talons are as well. Oh, now it's got even more texture, more clouds. It's being pushed more and more into the background. And now it's, it's a galactic beam, right? up in the sky. So the next stage is to figure out what what layer you want your character inserted, right? So I want mine somewhere between here and here, but I need the talons and the tail. Actually, I want the tail to be behind the water tower, but I want the talons to be in front of it, right? So it's really good to find a way for your creature to interact with the environment. So I'm just going to be pretty straightforward. How do I get the talons and the, and the tail to interact with the environment? Well, the first thing is I can take from my creature layer, which is red here, my final combined layer. I'm just going to lasso and copy those feet. So Command-J, duplicate them. And then I'm going to move that duplicate. I'll mark that as red. I, I tend to mark most of my creature layers, so I know all the components. And I can call them my talons. Right. That allows me to move the rest of the parts of my creature backwards, while those talons now stay in the foreground. Now, what about the tail? So the tail does need to go behind the water tower, but what's this going on? What's this going on? Oh, no, that, that makes sense. But this I have to cut off. So now I'm going to go to my auto select layer. And I'm going to try to find the elements that are on top of my tail. They're on this layer right here. And then, because this is assignment three, not assignment one, I'm going to use what I now know about erasing and about soft edge brushes. And I might use a little bit of that atmosphere, but I need that sharp edge of the tail to remain. Oh, but I'm... That's interesting. Let's see. What I'm noticing is that there's a slight echo to it, and that's because the edge of the water tower is slightly less than opaque. So I can also use clone stamp on the water tower layer and sample just the current layer. and bring some sharpness to this edge. That isn't quite there right now. And then I can go back to the eraser and erase away from it. So that my tail can really look like it's running behind it. So anywhere your character interacts with your setting matters a lot. I can also go to my character layer, and now I start thinking about the lighting. But before I, I even do that, there's simple things I have learned to do. How can I make this character match the setting a little bit better? What are some techniques we've learned? So yeah, I can I can move it under more of the texture overlay. And I kind of like that ice texture on top of it, but maybe I don't want quite so much. So I can duplicate that texture overlay and put it over the top of my creature, right? And then reduce it a little bit until I'm happy with it. 
And then the one I was thinking of, like the first thing we do to elements before we try